What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. Today's set is one of the new releases with the 18 plus tag. It has an optional powered up upgrade and has tons of wheels. This is the 10277 Crocodile Locomotive. As you see, the box has the new simplified design that replaces the brighter tone of the previous Creator Expert sets. It is very serious, very dark, but I'm not sure if the 18 plus label is really required here. Anyway, the box looks cool. We see the locomotive on the stand on the front and a custom logo with the set number and the name. The whole look is very classy, although it does not provide too many information, and apparently the black surface is very sensitive to scratches. We don't get too much information either on the back this time. The dimensions of the set with the stand is there. It's quite impressive as it is more than half a meter long. There's also some information about the optional motorization. We need the set itself, a powered up hub, you know, the AAA one that is simply called the Hub, a Technic L motor, surprisingly, and the Powered Up app. So, let's open the box. The set has 1,271 pieces, the price is 99.99 euros or dollars, and it will be available from the 1st of July. There are 9 numbered bags inside, splitting the building into 4 phases. There's an unnumbered one with some plates and the wheels, and the building instructions with the sticker sheet. The sticker sheet has a single big sticker, this is for the plaque on the stand with some information about the original Swiss Crocodile locomotive. The manual has the same design as the box. It has a QR code that guides you to the LEGO instructions app, but unfortunately the digital instructions are not yet available before the release date. It's nice to see some extra information about the original locomotive on the first two pages, and again a list of the required elements for the motorization. After that the building process can start with the base, but let's stop for a second here. I totally get the serious black look of the box and I really like it, but this black background in the instructions was quite shocking for the first sight. I'm not sure about the printing technology, but first of all it seems to be a total waste of ink, but that's not the biggest issue here. This set has mostly black and reddish brown pieces, and as you see the black pieces are somewhat visible because they get a bright white contour, but the reddish brown pieces are almost invisible. It is actually better on the photo than in real life, I can't literally see anything from the distance of 1 meter with two bright video lights next to me. At some stages it gets better because there are pieces with brighter colors, but choosing this background for this set was a huge mistake. I'm not even sure why it has to be black. The Haunted House, which is also an 18 plus set, has light grey background in the instructions, so it's not an obligatory choice for these sets. The A-Wing Starfighter, which is also an 18 plus set, has similar black instructions, but it has mostly brighter pieces and the dark red is more visible there as well, at least in the online version. I really hope LEGO will do something with this, maybe the digital version will be better, but I think this paper version needs to be changed. So, after this small intermezzo, let's start the building process. The first thing to assemble is the base, you might not realize it immediately, but the size will be very impressive. The build itself is not the most exciting one, especially when you need to build the railroad ties with all those tiles and tiny little 1x1 one one plates. Once finished, it's actually pretty sturdy. I'm sure you can pick the whole thing up with the locomotive on it. Here are the parts from the second batch of bags. Since the only sticker was already used, everything else will be printed, which is a very nice extra, apparently becoming a trend with the 18 plus sets. There are a few lime green pieces, but the color seems to be consistent this time. The build of the locomotive starts with a drivetrain. All four wheels will be driven through a set of Technic axles and gears. The traction of the wheels is improved with rubber bands. Not sure how common this is with other LEGO train sets, but apparently it works well. This is how the base of the central unit looks like with the wheels added. Again, some nice printed parts and the clever usage of the handlebars. Going forward, there are again some printed tiles. After adding the tank gear with the axle, make sure it does not fall out accidentally. At this stage, it is not phased in place. This is the interior of the central unit with some cool printed fans on the top and the detailed instruments for the drivers. Initially, the minifigs were holding the box and the wrench, but both have their respective places. I really like here how the pieces with different orientations end up forming a smooth and sturdy surface. Bag 3 has the window piece in it that was only available previously in black, blue and white, so train and boat builders will be happy for sure seeing it in a new color. The two pantographs are quite detailed but not too bulky. I really like the part usage, if you take a closer look we have binoculars, claws and a whole bunch of other pieces. The assembly is a bit tricky, but the end result looks very nice. After finishing the roof, the central unit is completed. Bag 4 has the majority of the pieces. 
we need to build the two ends of the locomotive that are symmetrical. I suggest to build them simultaneously, although you need to pay more attention to the quantities, since uh, similar pieces are located at the same location, it is easier to find them in one take. The orientation of the wheels is a bit tricky. First I mounted them symmetrically, but as the instructions show you on the next page, they need to be rotated by 90 degrees compared to each other, so I had to correct this. This is how the proper orientation should look like. An unusual appearance of black sausages can be seen here, and here we have some cool snot building. I thought these panels will be flimsy with the technique used, but once they are in place, the construction is quite sturdy. These units are finished, so all we have to do is to connect everything. These are the final steps of the build. I did not measure exactly the building time, but it should be between one and a half and two hours. Here are the extra pieces. I'm not sure about that slope. Usually there are no such pieces among the additional ones, but I could not see it missing anywhere. So here is our locomotive on the stand. I would say it is quite impressive, it has lots of details and can be a very nice decoration on any desk or shelf. But the reason why I don't really agree with the 18 plus label is the fact that it is actually very much playable. You can put the minifigs in the seats and the train fits perfectly on a regular city train track and it can be pushed along. Thanks to the articulated design it runs smoothly on the curves as well. If we look at it from the side, the gap between the sections is quite unrealistic, it's not there on the original locomotive. It is needed for the articulation to work properly, but I think with a few pieces it could be covered to look better. Another interesting thing is the fact that the smaller wheels that does not have the rubber bands are actually not touching the rails. They rotate together with the others, but due to the slight angle of the front and rear section, they are floating in the air. It does not affect the performance, it might actually help on the curves, but it looks a bit weird. If we go back to the minifix for a minute, we have a male and a female character. If their clothes look familiar, that's not a coincidence. The torso comes from the Alan Grant minifig from the Jurassic Park sets. It's a bit weird to see the flesh color over the scarf, as these figs have the standard yellow heads, but you will notice it only if you know what you are looking for. So, the locomotive works great on the track. What about making it remote controlled? As I mentioned previously, you need the AAA powered up hub and the Technic large motor for this. The motor is an interesting choice for the first sight. Why not a train motor or the medium linear motor or the medium motor, as they have connection points for a studied build? Well, the train motor simply does not fit, as this locomotive has a custom build for the wheels, and you will see that the Technic motor is simply connected with Technic pins, so there's no need for the studied motors. It's actually easier to connect and remove it in this way. Here is the process. Some internals and parts need to be removed, then a few pieces need to be replaced that were seamlessly stored in the central section originally. We connect the motor with the pins, put the hub in place and that's pretty much it. Since the roof covers completely the hub, the operation is not as convenient as on a regular city train. You need to remove the roof to turn it on and off and to connect to the remote or to the smart device. The status LED is not visible either. Since the profile for the set in the Powered Up app is not released yet, I cannot show you that part. Here is a screenshot where you can see what to expect. As the motor used is not the regular train motor, the other train profiles does not work either in the Powered Up app, but it is possible to use the Powered Up remote. The behavior of the motor will be still different. With the regular train motor, the speed control is gradual. Every press of the plus or minus buttons make the motor slightly faster or slower, but we don't need to press and hold the buttons. With the Technic large motor there's no speed control and the motor only runs until you press the buttons. Once released the motor stops immediately. This makes the control of the train less sophisticated with the remote compared to the city trains, but still kind of works. As you see the speed of the crocodile locomotive is much lower than the city train. Full speed on the crocodile is somewhere between level 2 and 3 on the city train. This makes the crocodile locomotive easier to control and with this gearing it will be pretty powerful too. Apart from the remote, the free coding area of the Powered Up app is also available for control. I previously created a custom train control profile with the two slider interface and it works perfectly with this train as well. Click on the link in the top right corner or in the description for more details about this custom control profile. 
It would be also possible to create a code for the PowerDAP remote that replicates the behavior of the train motor. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see that. So to sum it up, I think this set was a great surprise for everyone. We did not expect any trains outside of the LEGO City World. It's a nice building experience, it has many details and looks great on the stand. With the motorization option it is also very playable and can be used in any city train layout. For me the only negative point about this set is the black background of the instructions, but that can be fixed in the digital version easily and if there's a demand I'm sure LEGO can change the physical one as well. Let me know in the comments your thoughts about the set, do you like it or not, would you play with it or simply use it as a display piece. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up, you can also subscribe and tap the notification bell if you don't want to miss my technic reviews and other LEGO RC videos. See you next time, bye bye!